What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we're installing the brand new FuryTech Grasshopper Carbon Fiber Chassis Kit, now with Traxxas TRX4M. Welcome back to the channel everybody, got more TRX4M upgrades for you. This time we've got a brand new FuryTech Carbon Fiber Chassis Kit. I am so excited for this for a number of reasons. It's got a multitude of shock placements on here. It's also wider in the front, which should allow us to articulate further because we can clear the servo in either direction when this thing articulates. We've got some massive articulation out of this thing already, but I'm thinking we can get even more with this new chassis kit and we're gonna do it in a cleaner way. So this is gonna be awesome. We're gonna take the opportunity while the thing's apart to put in some more Endura upgrades too. So I got some plus two millimeter extended axles, some heavy duty steel axles, got a brass steering link, and I got some brass C-hubs that we're gonna put on. So we're kind of just adding on to the existing upgrades, enhancing it a little bit, but the chassis kit is gonna be a big one. So let's dive in and take a little bit of a closer look at these upgrades, and then we'll get to installing them. Let's take a look at these things. So here's the axles. So not a huge amount of width gained from these axles. They look pretty heavy duty though. These are nice steel two-piece axles. Now you put them together, they're the CV styles, but you put them together yourself with the pins and all the hardware here. Endura has just been rocking it with the TRX4M upgrades. They've really just been pumping out upgrade after upgrade, and I'm psyched to be able to put these on the build. They've really enhanced it a lot. Here's our brass C-hubs. This is that nice black finish. I'd initially ordered gold, but then they came out with the black right after so that's one going back a little bit so Endura has been churning these out so fast it's like I order a whole bunch like a ton of stuff all at once and then a day later after my order ships they come out with a whole suite of upgrades that I would have liked to have had from the beginning and they end up having to buy all that stuff too so good business model Endura because I keep buying duplicate stuff because you keep improving what you're putting out anyway I'm excited to have these black C hubs on here. It's gonna complement the rest of the upgrades that we've got on there already. Similarly, we've got the black brass steering linkage. Now I've got the Triel aluminum steering linkage on there now, but this will just add a little bit more weight up front and just again, match the rest of our components with that black finish and the raw brass accents. So cool stuff there. But the showcase of this video is gonna be this carbon fiber chassis kit. Now, FuryTech is also on the gas when it comes to the TRX4M. You know, we just did the brushless conversion, which turned that thing into a whole new beast. But now I'm really excited for this chassis kit because it's going to optimistically solve one of the biggest issues that we've got. And that in the front of this thing, there's no room for the servo to articulate. So this should give us more room because as I've seen in the pictures, it looks wider in the front allowing it to articulate over the servo or to let that servo drop underneath or at least move around further in between the frame rails. So I'm really excited for this. Why don't we open this up and take a look. Here's our hardware. Yes. There we are. Not a lot to it, just three pieces. Very strong, very, very rigid, super light. Nice setup here. So we've really only got a couple pieces. Looks like we get a carbon fiber ESC tray and we get a cross member. And that's pretty much it. Imagine the cross member probably goes right in the front there. ESC tray goes in the back. I can see it's slotted right there. Kind of mock this up. That's basically what it's going to look like. My gosh, it weighs nothing. It's like holding air. But laterally, it's so rigid. Very nice piece of hardware. It looks great. Not ultra glossy like some of the other carbon fiber pieces that we worked with lately, but very nice looking unit. Tons of shock placements. This is going to eliminate the ESC tray and the shock mounts that we have on the build currently, but it's gonna give us more options for the build and for versatility with our shocks and adjustment with our shocks. Cool stuff. All right, I'm pumped. Why don't we get to the install, start putting this thing in. Doing a play-by-play -play of the installation here. Start off with the front end, doing our three upgrades here. 
we're going to start with the axles and work our way out. So getting to the axles, take the knuckles off, then take the C-hubs off, build the new axles. It's real simple to put them together. Slide them in place, put the C-hubs back on, just a couple bolts on either side. Then put the knuckles back on, should be good to go. Steering linkage, real simple. What with the Endura unit, you do have to build the pivot hardware. Be mindful that the center piece is bigger than the rest. Moving on to the rear, super easy. Two bolts on either side of the axle. Pull those axle shafts off, put the new ones in. Real simple in the back. Moving on to the Fury Tech chassis. Now, I built it, pre built it myself, and noticed that I put it on backwards. So don't do what I do. The bumper inserts are on the inside of the chassis, not the outside like I did. I actually had to tear it all down and redo it. But in any case, it's only three bolts on either side of the skid plate and then your suspension mounts and the old chassis peels right off and then you lay the new one on and then it bolts up really simple after that. Okay, my friends, here is the kit. So it was pretty easy install, actually very easy. It's just, let's see, I don't know how many bolts there are. There's one, two, three, so there's six bolts on either side of the skid plate here. You undo your shocks, you take your bumper mounts out, and then basically just drop the whole rolling chassis out of the frame rails, and then pop the Fury Tech on here, and bolt it back up, and it's good to go. Retains the stock battery tray, which I like. Sits in there really nice and factory looking. It's a really clean looking kit. Works really well with the chassis setup. I like that it has the bumper attachments, you know, so many aftermarket frame rails and chassis kits. You have to ditch your front and rear bumpers, but this retains the stock bumpers, which is really nice. I did have to move my front bumper mount one hole forward because the mount here would not clear the NSDRC servo. So it was getting hung up on this wire right here. So I had to push the bumper out, uh, probably two or three millimeters, which I was initially a little bummed out about when you have the body on, it's barely noticeable. You see a little bit of these red wires sticking out from the body, but it's not a big deal. So I can, I can live with that. I love the back. It's got plenty of room for the electronics. It's much more room than the stock chassis, I feel. These were pretty squished in there prior, but now I've got plenty of room here. It just maintains that really clean, nice look that Traxxas did from the factory. I'm really happy to be able to retain that with the new chassis kit. However, one thing I feel is that I lost articulation in the front pretty significantly, I think. You know, it it still has tons. I mean, don't get me wrong, when this thing can flex like nobody's business, but I was really hoping that I'd be able to clear that servo in the front and it just doesn't happen. You know, does I think in the stock chassis I was able to get the servo underneath the frame rails and get some more articulation there. But this does not, I mean, I suppose I could drop the shocks down and maybe I'll play with that a little bit more if I really want to get more articulation out of it. I've got all of these placings for the front shocks. So we'll see how it behaves when we get it on the course, if I want to do that. But for now, I do feel like at least in the current shock placement that I've got here, that I lost a little bit of articulation. Certainly not in the back. I mean, it has tons of room from the rear. This thing can flex like crazy in the back. With the body on it, it's got a real nice look to it. It's got a nice flat stance to it. I really like it a lot. It's another reason why I don't really wanna mess with the front shock placement a whole lot because it's gonna lift the chassis up. If I drop the shocks down to get more drop on the axle, it's gonna lift the front end up. So I'm pretty happy with how it is now, even though I do feel like I lost a little bit of room. But hey, we'll see how it performs. You know, it still, still can do the full three inch ramp with room to spare. So it still has tons and tons of flex. And now we've just got more options for shock placement here. Looking good. That's for the other mods we did. You know, we did the brass steering linkage. We did the brass C hubs. We did the plus two millimeter axles. So it's hard to notice, but it is technically 
wider by a little bit. All of that was really easy install. I again took the opportunity to put in some more bearings from the Little Guy Racing Parts kit that I've been doing, just working my way through. So took the bushings out of the C-hubs and put the bearings in. So that was good to be able to do that. Everything else bolted up nice, new steering linkage. It's really sharp. So happy with the mods. Why don't we get it on the course and see how this thing performs. Okay, let's check it out, see how this thing does. The things I'm looking out for, I'm looking for how it articulates, how the suspension works, and what the front end does on inclines. I see that carbon fiber peeking out there, I like that. Looks cool, I'm gonna say that. I don't know what is going on over here? Well, I got some crazy lift happening on this side. I also put on the flex extensions from adaptive designs I put the flex extensions on the back and I haven't really run it with those yet so it's gonna be interesting to see how this thing behaves all around I think I just lost my body right there yeah, I'm unclipped in the back. Had to fix Black Betty's skirt there. Make sure we're good. Let's work our way over here to do some inclines. See how it does. It's quite stable on the side hill, that's for sure. I didn't see any front end lift on the chute there. Let's try the escalator. So far, I'm really happy with how the front end's doing. You know, I took my limiting straps off when I did this conversion, and I didn't put them back on because I wanted to see how it did. It's pretty good. We're on the Hell's Gate line now. Let's see how this does. If we're going to get front end lift, this is where it's going to be. This section of the course is so challenging now. It's just getting worn in and so slick. So far looking pretty composed here. Make it in that slick spot there. It catches everyone here. Slight front end lift there. Not bad at all though. Pretty impressive. Look at that getting all twisted up. I love it. 
the bumper's sticking out. I'm not having any clearance issues. It doesn't feel like. Let's see how we do on the decline here. Pretty good. Still articulates really well. I'm really liking the chassis setup, guys. I think I was initially a little leery about how it was gonna do, but I'm actually pretty pumped with this setup. there but this thing screams when you get the, get the throttle I got some lift there but still was able to pull it off doing good <laughs> we gonna save this or what That was nuts. Fury Tech Grasshopper, let's talk about it. So some of the pros of this thing, it looks great, fantastic fit and finish. And the carbon fiber is ultra light, ultra strong. The kit went together really well. It's got a multitude of shock placements, front and back, lots of room for customization to tune your build how you want it and how you need it. And I can imagine if you're using stock suspension, this would be a game changer because you could just really utilize these positions and make a big difference. Those shock positions and the chassis layout is just going to open up another world of possibilities for your TRX 4M. So great kit, definitely works awesome. Some of the drawbacks, you know, I do feel like I lost articulation in the front end, but I'm hoping that I can sort that out with the shock placement. I'm not sure if it's the choice of bolt that I'm using for my shocks, but the frame rails themselves are not threaded. So I had to put the bolt through and then put a nut on the other side, which I'm kind of thinking is how the kit is intended to work because they supply you with four nylon locking nuts. So I'm guessing that those are for your suspension mounting so that you can you know, throw the bolt through it and put the nut in on the back, which if you've watched some of my other videos, you know I'm not a big fan of because I like to tune my suspension based on how the rig is behaving and based on the terrain. 
So I'm doing a multitude of adjustments on my chassis fairly often and having to undo that nut and you know not lose that hardware when you're on the trail or at the track somewhere. It's just kind of a pain. Thankfully, these are the bigger nylon nuts, like the wheel nut style. So they're a lot easier to work with than some of the smaller microscopic ones that come with other kits. The kit itself, fit and finish, is great. I did strip out the cross member in the front immediately. Both of those little screws that came with the kit stripped out and would not tighten at all. And actually, when I was doing some of my flex testing for my hero shots here, it split apart and one of the little bolts flew right out of it on camera but i was able to take some of the smaller scx24 screws that i had and thankfully those threaded right in so i just took some longer screws from my pile of hardware and threaded those in there now it seems solid but overall a great kit i'm really happy with it i'm glad i got it glad i threw it in here thanks fury tech for sending it over for me to check out really love it all the fury tech stuff is really coming together on this thing it's working awesome I wanted to get you guys some more run footage, but ended up stripping out my transmission gears going up on the chute. So I really wanted to get more content, but the Bronco wasn't having it tonight. We got the first casualty of the brushless system, I think, when it just, it's got to be the transmission gears because everything else seems to be in line. It's just making a terrible, terrible noise when I hit the throttle and the wheels are under any pressure. They aren't moving anywhere. <laughs> Looks like... Do you think transmission gears? <laughs> so, Traxxas, I need those metal transmission gears, please. So, anyway, this thing's on the bench until I can get some new transmission gears into it. And then I'll get you guys some more footage. But I'm going to wrap it up there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below, what you think of the Bronco and how it's coming along. I'm going to start working on my son's TRX 4M Defender and start doing an Overland build on that. So, let me know if you're excited to see that, too. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned as we continue to build out these rigs, and I'll see you in the next video.